Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today I'm going to show you the supplies that you need for plain air painting. Plain air painting is when you're painting on location, you're outside, you're painting a landscape or a city scene, you're painting in plain air. And one advantage of painting in plain air or plain air painting is that you can really capture a lot more of the colors that you see, the feel of the location. It's even, I feel like even if it's a little brief sketch, sometimes it's more accurate than a photograph that you could take of that place. And um, in June, I took a plein air painting workshop with um, Ryan S. Brown. So it was the Masters Academy in Springville, Utah, and Ryan S. Brown was the instructor for the plein air painting course. And so we would go out twice a week, then we would come back and kind of talk about what we learned. But I also, I learned a lot about the supplies that you need, some things that can help, tips and tricks, um, I clearly am not an expert at this, but I did learn a lot of things that are useful for someone else who wants to go out and do plein air painting and maybe couldn't afford to take one of these classes. So today I'm just going to show you some of those supplies and also talk about like the pros and cons and um, some other things. Also, I'll put links to all of the stuff in the description, especially to all of the different colors that we used because that would take a long time. And don't mind this because my microphone broke right before I started filming. I tried to like turn it anyway. So the first thing I'm going to talk about really quick is what I would take out with me. The supplies that you need. So you need something to keep all your supplies in. This is a backpack that it's a skateboarding backpack, but it has a ton of pockets and a lot of like clips and bands. It's just super useful. Um, I've used it as a diaper bag. I've used it to travel and now it's my plein air painting bag. So you need something just to put everything in. And the second thing you need is somewhere to keep all of your paints. I don't even know what I would call this, um, but this is a Yugo. And this is basically what has like your paints in it. And then you can hold um, your panels. These things move up and down. Clearly I should have cleaned this uh, off. I'm not the cleanest painter. So anyway, you can, as you can see, it's super convenient. It makes it easy for you to have this, but you don't want to like hold this, you know, the whole time you're painting, even though I kind of did that on a fence and it was really crazy. So you need something to hook it into. So just like your camera hooks into a tripod, these hook into a tripod. And for some reason, the name of this is just completely evading me right now, but I have a short time to film. So I'm just going to do it. We'll just wing it and I'll put it in the description below. Another brand of those boxes, for some reason, I just can't think of what it is, is the Edge Pro. That was like the creme de la creme Lamborghini of these things. So if you want that one, you can do it. Um, the other thing that was super, super helpful was this tripod. It was expensive, but it is just small, lightweight, and it's extremely durable. So this is the Edge Pro, and this is the one that's made out of carbon. So they also have an aluminum one that's cheaper, but you can see, I mean, it's just awesome. It has like these little tools hooked right to it. Um, the design is great. The weight is awesome. It weighs like nothing and amazing for traveling and plein air painting. So you could also just use any tripod. <laughs> you don't have to buy all this expensive stuff, but it was really helpful to have. And definitely, um, I did take this to Zion when I went there a few weeks ago and it was just super convenient. The next thing you want to have in your bag are your paints. So I just keep mine in a plastic bag. Some people had boxes, just whatever works for you. I learned a lot about, I learned a lot about oil paint as well. Like do not use zinc white ever. I guess real oil painters, they don't use it. It like isn't very powerful. It's a terrible color. I don't know. <laughs> um, a lot of the artists that I was painting with, they like to use lead white. Um, I just used titanium white after I realized zinc white was a big no-no, made me look really amateur, uh, but that was okay. <laughs> I just can't get a, keep, can't get a kick out of this. I should put like my name on this piece of tape. Um, really quick, I just wanted to say two colors that were extremely helpful that I had never heard of before. And I've been painting for a while, but I've never taken Besides college, I haven't taken like any oil painting classes. So the two colors are asphaltum, which is like a warm, deep brown, which is a beautiful color. And then orange molybdate. Look in the comments below <laughs> and I'll spell that for you. So anyway, those are the colors that you need. You need some paint brushes. 
And one thing I learned that was really helpful about my paintbrushes was I have this little, let's see if I can get it in focus. I'll move it in front of my face. I have this tiny little paintbrush and the bristles are super short. It's a bright brush and they're super stiff. And so when I was painting outside with this, it just wiped the paint off of my palette and of my paper, my canvas. So it was really hard for me to paint with it. And um, my instructor pointed that out. And so then I started using these, brush these brushes that have a little bit finer bristle. Um, they're not gonna push the paint away as much, but I realized I need, I need to get some new brushes. I need some softer bristled brushes for the very last details so that it doesn't scrape my paint off. And this is just a brush holder thing that I got, which is nice. Some people had like a, a round tube, whatever works for you. I mean, you could probably even make your own thing to carry it in. This is just something that hooks onto um, the thing. <laughs> what is it? Oh my heck, how can I think of it? This is just something that hooks onto the Yugo onto the side so that I could put my paint thinner and my, it's really just for your paint brushes, but I would put my paint thinner on it. And sorry, I, I keep looking over here because I, ha I, I can see myself in that one and just making sure I'm in focus. This is the third to last thing that you need. This handy dandy little bucket is what you use to clean out your brushes with. So they call it a stainless steel brush washer. And you just put mineral spirits in this. And one of the girls there said she'd had it in there for like a year, the same mineral spirits, like just keep cleaning your brush out, which is, I thought was really cool. Um, and some people would hang this from something on their tripod and kind of clean out their brushes as they painted. He also recommended using oleo gel. That's like a thickening medium that won't make it look plastic, but it um, just thickens it up and I think it shortens the drying time, but I could not find any. They're all sold out online. That's not a big surprise these days. Um, then you need something to paint on. And there's a few different things you could do. Someone, one lady that was there who's super nice, she used watercolor paper and then she would paint over it with this medium, and I'll put it below. I cannot remember what it's called right now, but you can get it at any hardware supply store. And that was her painting surface. And it actually was a really nice surface uh, to paint on. Some people just use panels you get at the store, but I decided to use some of the cheaper panels for practicing. And then I invested in some more expensive panels. So if money is not an issue, these are Raymar Art Panel. Okay, let's see, it's RaymarArt.com. And seriously, these are amazing to paint on. I just got their sample pack so I could see what, what textured surfaces I like to paint on. There's so many different ones. There's Belgian linen. There is cotton canvas is this one. There is, I don't know. This is just called oil painting paper. So you can kind of see, I don't know if that's in focus. I need to just hide behind it. Come on. There, now it's kind of in focus. You can kind of see the texture on those, maybe, maybe not, probably not. This one is the Belgian linen. So I do, I, I really liked painting on that. It just isn't as shiny and kind of plasticky as the, the cheaper panels that I get from Hobby Lobby or you know other, other cheaper places. Like this for sure is a cheaper panel. Let's see if I can get it in focus. This is one of those cheaper panels you can kind of see, maybe not. So you definitely need something to paint on. And very last, you need like a paper towel or a rag or something to kind of help clean your brushes off. And for me, something to help clean my hands off because they were bad. And one girl had wet wipes with her, which was one woman, sorry, had wet wipes and that was really helpful. I thought that she had those. Okay, the two big tips that he gave were squint, and back up. So when you're looking at a landscape, there's a ton going on. Like that's what happened to me when I was trying to paint this, this scene. Let me see if I can get it. So this scene was like a bridge with a river and these trees, you know, and we had like maybe an hour and a half to paint it. There was just so much going on, so much information I needed to simplify it. And he really helped me simplify a little bit in here and squint because when I was painting this, I didn't really care too much about the leaves in the background. I just wanted to get these leaves that were coming in front of the tree trunk and like the moss that was growing on it, the orange moss. And so 
he really helped me to kind of squint it out and blur the background a little bit instead of having it so noisy. So squint, and then when you're painting, just take breaks. And I recommend this with any painting and just back up, look at it, take a little break. And then sometimes you can see something that might need to be reworked or sometimes it's even encouraging like, oh, that actually is working. So those are the two main tips. Um, the process he said to go in was number one, you do a light sketch. Number two, um, you paint back to front. So if you're painting a sky, he said to paint it into the tree branches. You're not gonna paint this guy like around the tree branches, kind of paint it in so that you can layer those branches and the, those leaves on top of the sky, which made sense to me. And he said to start with the darkest areas first. So like the very darkest, I got some orange paint like right there, but just ignore that. So the darkest parts first. So like I painted in this area, some of the water in before I painted the lighter waterfall part. So the darkest parts first, and then you kind of fill in your major shapes, major um, areas that are going on in major, I can't read my handwriting, um, <laughs> but then you just basically fill in major shapes. I'm pretty sure that's what I meant. So you're roughing in the canvas just with your main colors that are in there. It's a little bit more washy in your dark areas, and then it's straight paint usually in your lighter areas. That was really helpful for me. These are some other tips about like composition that were very, very helpful. Really, you wanna find that focal point, like the tree, the something in there that um, deserves the attention, and then you just kind of soften other things. He talked about it being like poetry, if that makes sense to you. And um, then he said to study master paintings. They've already kind of mastered these techniques. Also, hyper refinement is not the goal with this type of painting, because I kind of thought in the beginning it was like, oh, we're just trying to paint like a picture, but because I'm not used to painting so realistically, but really it's about understanding. It's not about hyper-realism. It's about really understanding what we're seeing and the relationships between them, which was extreme, that was helpful too. He said to problem solve before you paint. When you, when you go out there and you figure out this landscape you wanna paint, problem solve before, like what am I gonna paint first? What's gonna be last? What are kind of the steps that you wanna go through? And in the end, these are the things that I learned besides all of that. <laughs> it's like, what I learned is this last section that I wrote on my notes. Um, new paint colors were really helpful for me. I'd never seen them and they're extremely uh, great colors to have on your palette. Do not use zinc white. Um, my brushes were way too stiff and they wiped away the painting. When you're out there painting in plain air, like you really um, need to be able to layer your colors and layer your, your steps and if your paintbrush is kind of wiping everything off, it's not helpful. Um, but I really, really loved it and it was definitely more accurate than a picture. We went out one night and painted sunsets um, as the sun was going down and this was so helpful for me. They were really fast. I mean like five to seven minutes each but the colors that I saw and I was able to kind of try to copy onto these little canvases they're way better than anything I could have gotten in a photograph. So that was really, um, really good for me to learn how to do that. So I kind of went from the first steps, this was the first one I painted with the class, and then, uh, actually, this is the last one I painted. I had like an hour, so I didn't have a lot of time to paint this, but um, it was a river and these rocks and this bright green grass. But I got kind of a good start, and so what you can do is you can go back um, two or three more times to finish your painting, or I could use this and my photograph to finish it. Um, it's just kind of up to you how you want to use them. This has oil clay on it, oil-based clay. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how that happened. But anyway, you can kind of see like I'm just trying to understand and learn how to use these techniques a little bit more in these. But plein air painting is really, really fun. It's just amazing to go outside and just have time to paint. It's a real luxury, actually, I found. I paid a lot for babysitters while I was doing it, but it was totally worth it, and my kids had way more fun with the babysitters probably than they usually have with me. But um, it, was, it was a good experience, and I loved just the people I was around were amazing, and I would highly recommend it. If you have any questions about these, um, about plein air painting, Again, I'm not an expert, I just took one course. I have painted outside before by myself, but never like this. So anyway, good luck, get outside. Hopefully you can go outside now. Some of the videos where I say that, 
you actually couldn't go outside and that was that was a hard time but hopefully you can now and you can go enjoy these beautiful skies and beautiful landscapes beautiful cities that you live in if you can't just open your window just paint what you see out there but anyway have a wonderful day thank you so much for joining me on mr otter studio and we'll see you in a little bit <laughs> i think i'm gonna make a video about zinc white <laughs>